for a transportation. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to be there for that. I'd like to keep us on track. So uh, I'm going to finish right now. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, and we will start with introductions. Victoria Reinhardt, Ramsey County Commissioner, District 7. Jim McDonough, Commissioner, District 6. Lee Merkin, CFO. Ryan no. Connor, County Mayor. Oh, Raphael Ortega, District 5. Always look over your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Always there. Ryan Connor, County Manager. Tony <laughs> Carter, Commissioner, District 4. Mary Jo McGuire, Commissioner, District 2. Uh, Nicole Brethren, Commissioner, District 1. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everyone. Paul Allwood, the County Manager for Health and Wellness. Happy evening, Public Health. Karen Francois, Deputy County Manager for Information and Public Records. Uh, Melissa Jermont, Commissioner of Lawyer's Office. Matt Hill, Commissioner Carter's Office. Darren Tobel, Commissioner Reinhardt's Office. Joanna Berg, Deputy County Manager of uh, Economic Growth and Community Investment. Black, so I'm Human Resources Director. Mark Thompson, Finance. Moy Lee Yang Pagan. Jan Gusby, County Manager Administration. Alex Bitsight, Incoming CFO. Come on, round of applause. Someone is clapping at DHS right now. Dushani <laughs> <laughs> Dye Finance. Dana Naki, Procurement and Finance. Uh, people finance. Tom Huck, Finance. Bianca Christina, Finance. Olivia Santana, Martin Finance. Jennifer Shusky, Baker Corrections. Janelle White, Control of Health and Wellness Service Team. Chris Sandler, I'm your owner of the Trevor. John Clay, Director of Community Corrections. Steve, Community Finance. George Hargo, Controller of the Economic Growth and Community Investment and Service Team. Jordan Bruce, uh, Finance and Health. Excellent. Uh, so I, I asked uh, our CFO if there was anything he'd like me to say to kick us off, and I was instructed to say, um, <laughs> Lee Merkins has done an incredible job. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to go on without him. <laughs> so with that, <laughs> we're done. The edge. We're done. Well done. Right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all seriousness, I think we're very grateful for uh, his work and look forward to hearing his outgoing statements. Uh, Madam Chair, I was next on the agenda. Oh, I go sorry. Next. I'll, I'll be right to the other side. Uh, uh, let's go to uh, Ryan O'Connor. Hey. Thanks, Madam Chair, and I'll keep it brief to go to the headliner. I think it's great how many people showed up today, too, to, to listen to some of the comments. We originally set this up. Um, this was something that I wanted the opportunity for Lee to have with all of you as a discussion just around the idea of someone who spent 10 years at the seat of the finance table and seen a lot of change here with many of you through this organization and some of the topics that he has spent time talking with me about and I'm sure with my predecessor about don't always make it into every Tuesday's meeting in the same coherent way or they're still in process and not all the way to the end and the finish line and I realized that as you transition away from a county manager who had been here for 10 years and now a CFO who had been here for 10 years, some of that just gets lost and it, it's left otherwise just to me to say, well, Lee was talking to me about this you know, for a really long time. And I, so I reached out and I just asked him if he'd be willing to share final thoughts. And um, part of the goal today was to make it his final thoughts. This was not something we co-scripted together. I really wanted to allow him to share whatever thoughts he had. Um, and I think that's an important spot to give leaders that chance to do. And so I hope you engage with them in a conversation, ask whatever questions you might have. And I appreciate all the people who came from across the organization to hear some of the health and opportunity in front of us. And, and a shout out to Alex for coming over today as well during her last week to find the time to come over and yeah. hear the things that Lee's about to say so she can uh, build on them or unwind them in the, <laughs> the grades. But in all seriousness, it shows that attempt at a, at a, at a committed handoff that we have from current to future CFO and a strong finance department as a whole and all the leaders here today from that department and my appreciation to everybody for that. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, Commissioner. Thank you, Ryan, for the invite of being here today. Uh, uh, appreciate the opportunity to kind of debrief and just throw some, some information out. As it says, uh, I'll provide comments, observations, and recommendations, whether you find them to be painfully obvious or whether you find them to be pearls of wisdom, you'll You'll, just, you'll have to judge for yourself. But I covered a lot of ground here, and hopefully it's, it, it's good to have the conversation just to give you food for thought. 
no decisions being made at this workshop. You can just settle back and, and enjoy a workshop without having sort of the onus of having to make decisions. Right. Uh, and, and I'm going to touch on the CFO transition items to to, uh, to give Alex a, a running head start and and talk a little bit about you know the importance of having a good strong board and CFO relationship and uh, food for thought on how to transition some of that and an opportunity for you all to have board questions and conversation mm -hmm. as well. So I'll start by saying uh, you know I, I I announced my retirement. I was I give the organization six months. And in that six months, I find myself saying goodbye to people over and over <laughs> and over again. And people kind of looking at me like, you've said goodbye. <laughs> You're still here. Go, school. Go, go, go. You know, yes, I'm trying. I really, I really am trying. But so th this is not my day for, for fine farewells. This is uh, conclusions and professional observations. My last day in the office will be March 11th. So between now and then, I'll have a chance to give my formal goodbyes later. And for that matter, we're going to have a, a, a going away event uh, on March 11. You'll get notifications, you'll get invites. Everyone in this room will be invited. So come if you'd like to come and uh, more on that, more on that to follow. Uh, so uh, uh, when I announced when I was at the, when I was CFO for the state judicial branch and I was at the judicial center 10 years ago and I announced that I was leaving to come to Ramsey County, people that knew Ramsey County said, you're gonna love Ramsey County. The board is, they're smart and they're strong and the, the department heads that have been there have been there forever. And, and they know, you know, they know who they are, what they're doing, what their job is. And, and that, all that was true at that time. And, and as a finance person, that, that appealed to me. You know, I, I know you're not gonna be surprised to hear me say yes, finance people like stability <laughs> and predictability and, and you know, sustainability. And that all, that all sounded really good and it was true, but of course, the minute I came, everyone started retiring. And I, I've got a visual here that I want to show you. If, oh, if, if, this, oh, if this photo is correct, this oh, is, I think, from December of 2009. Here's your senior management team at that time. And the wow. visual here is how quickly people come and people go. When, when I came, I thought, how are we gonna get through when this person leaves and that person leaves and how is this all gonna work? Yeah, wow. But the fact of the matter is, Ramsey County has been successful in, in uh, moving on and evolving just fine. Every oh. single person, Ramsey County has found somebody as good, if not better. And the same will hold true for the CFO slot. Alex has my complete confidence, she's a real CFO She's been in public service. She understands government. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and uh, uh, you know, Alex is going to come with her own skills and abilities. Uh, going to come with her own experiences that she can uh, um, uh, guide from. We'll bring in new ideas, new energy. This is going to be good for the organization. So I, I think that. I think that just needs to be said. Um, the, um, the other thing I should say is, um, uh, I think to make Alex successful, one of the things you're gonna need is just, is give her time and give her space and give her a chance to learn the organization. You know, you think about the, the breadth and depth of what Ramsey County does on a program and service delivery basis. Everything we do, and the financial structure that's surrounding that is complex. And you've got to go through a biennial budget process a time or two, I think, to really kind of get your sea legs and understand how it, how it works. I know how this is going to work for her. She's going to be at meetings, and inevitably people are going to turn to her and they're going to say, oh, well, what do you think? What should we do? And if she knows an answer right off the top of her head, good for her. Or if she needs a little bit of time to be able to say, you know, I'm mean, I have to think about this, I mean, I have to talk to some people and gather some more information. My advice to you is, and, and everyone else in the room, give her a little bit of room, give her a little bit of space. It's gonna take her time to learn Ramsey County, 
our organization and come to their own conclusions about you know whether what we're doing makes sense and we should stay the course or it doesn't make sense and we should make changes so uh, I think give her give her a little bit of a room would be one of my my recommendations and talk about the board for a minute so when I was told that coming here you were coming to an organization with a strong board that was true and I have really enjoyed working for you and I think you've been a strong board I think you've been a strategic board. I worked in local government, then I went to state government, then I went to county. I'm glad I ended my career here rather than starting it. Because if I had started it here, I would have been spoiled. I've worked with a lot of elected officials. Some have been real deals and some have been real. <laughs> and uh, I, I like the fact, and I've seen growth in you as a board in, in the time that I've been here and being more strategic. And, and I, as staff, as a senior staff member, like knowing that I know where we stand with the board, that we know what the direction of the board is, that you provide those directional signals to staff so that we're all in alignment. That's a really important thing. But I also think give credit where credit is due, you're not just operating on a strategic level, but you also understand details. You know this organization. You know what we do. You know how this organization operates. I think there's real strength for you as a board being both strategic as well as understanding decisions. So um, congratulations on that. I always thought that as a senior staff member, I had to bring my A game. I could not be sloppy or complacent when I, when I came to you with recommendations, either formally or informally. I always thought I had to be on my A game. You see the talented people behind me in this room. All of them smart, sophisticated, motivated. All of them able to bring their A game. I think your expectation of that in staff is a good thing and I would encourage you to continue that because everybody in this room can bring their A game all the time and I think that's a reasonable public service expectation. Um, finally, I would say that just my own personal style, I try not to uh, impose myself upon you to give you every opinion that I've had under the sun. I've not camped in your office. I've not uh, uh, spread myself in your doorway that you couldn't get out until you heard my opinion. I've reasoned that if there was something important that I had to say, I would tell you if I needed to tell you that. And I felt that over the years, that was kind of the, the agreement that we had, either spoken or unspoken. I always felt that if I, as CFO, had something that I needed to tell you, that if I needed to say something, that I knew that you would listen and you would hear me out. And I, I want you to know that I've been appreciative of that over the years. And not that I've kept count, but in the 10 years, I believe you have approved every single RBA that I have brought you. <laughs> And, and I would like to think part of that is I've hopefully read the room, right? And I've brought things to you that have been in alignment with what you wanted. But I appreciated that. I always felt like uh, uh, you were supportive of me as a CFO. And I hope you find a way of continuing that in the role with, uh, with your new CFO. I think just some, some uh, uh, things that are, should be clear to all of us. Ramsey County has developed a strong financial foundation. I really believe that. I think we're really well run financially compared to our peers. Certainly the experience that I've had with other public organizations, Bravo to you, uh, staff, the, the whole organization. I'm a big fan of the fourth, the, our fourth goal, our financial accountability goal. Model financial mm -hmm. accountability, transparency and strategic investments through professional operations and financial management. I'm proud of the organization having financial accountability as one of its goals. I think that's a good thing to remember. I think that's a good bedrock foundational timber. Uh, I, I hope you keep that goal. We're one of only two counties in Minnesota with a biennial budget process, and we mirror the state biennial budget process. I think knowing that oftentimes time is the enemy, having the ability to concentrate in year one on the number side and being able to concentrate in year two on the performance management side, I think that's a good thing. And I think that's served us well. 
and I hope you continue that, that trajectory. Ramsey County AAA bond rating from two major rating agencies. I'm going to talk a little bit later in my presentation about, about ratings and rating agencies, but we have a AAA from both major rating agencies and three awards from the Government Finance Officers Association, one for budgeting, one for our comprehensive annual financial report, and one for our popular annual financial report. Pleased to announce just this week, we were notified by GFOA that for our 2019 CAFR, we were yet again uh, certified and received the GFOA, GFOA award for our financial reporting process in our CAFR. So congratulations to you. all the staff in finance and in the departments that all work together to prepare the CAFR every year. We're in the top 3% of counties nationwide in terms of having a AAA bond rating from both major rating agencies. And I believe we are still the only county in Minnesota that has a AAA from both rating agencies as well as all three GFOE awards. Mm -hmm. Want to talk a little bit about sort of at the end of the presentation about kernels of, of um, thoughts that I'll be leaving you with. But before we go forward, maybe just a few minutes to go backwards and look at what we've done over the past 10 years. Modernization has been in vogue for the organization recently. Finance has gone through our own version of modernization, or at least evolution, over the past 10 years. 10 years ago, it was the Office of Budgeting and Accounting, and as the name implied, it, it focused on day-to-day -day accounting and budgeting. We've tried very hard to expand the functionality of BNA into a fully formed finance department. We renamed ourselves to reflect that. We now have a procurement a function. We have an enterprise resource planning and financial systems capability team. Finance and HR were the first two departments in Ramsey County that stood up application systems capability teams in order to properly support major county applications. In our case, it was the Aspen accounting system, as well as the HR summit and payroll system. And that's been a good model for the organization. And that, I think, has worked very well. We've also added an enterprise risk management uh, function, as well as a centralized collection unit. We're a more diverse department. The finance department is. We're younger, too. Uh, when I came, the finance department had staff that had been there 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. They've been there a long time, uh, which was a good thing. They, they were heavily seeped in, in Ramsey County finance. It was a heavily Caucasian experience. We have a different department now than what we did back in the day. And, and an emphasis on talent development countywide. Financial talent is in short supply uh, in, in the modern workforce right now. It's not easy finding good quality accountants and budget analysts and controllers and financial managers. And I think that's something that we have tried to focus on and will continue to focus on. I'll talk a little bit later about the Finance Fellows Program as a reminder. But the point is that we have to do a better job and we've tried really hard to do a better job on doing outreach to find good talented people and bringing them in. But once they're in, that's not the end of the story. We need to onboard them. We need to uh, train them and develop them. Once they're here, we need to develop career paths for them so they can uh, uh, grow and develop as employees, as people, and, and be productive for themselves as well as for the organization. Um, there's been a lot of turnover in the organization. I think we have lost some amount of financial acumen in the organization. We've hired good, talented people, but even the best people that we hire, it takes them a while to learn the budget process, to learn the Ramsey County system, the Ramsey County way. And I think this is something that we need to continue to try to develop our department heads, our finance managers, our staff, to, um, to build up that financial acumen over time. And I think time is our friend in terms of, of being able to build that up more. And, and But I think we need to be more mindful on the talent development side and on the training and development side. Over the past 10 years, uh, 
I've looked at what our what our budgets have been. They're somewhere in the six point five billion dollar range. I, I just find that a mind boggling. Think of all the money you're gonna save with me leaving. <laughs> if we spend six point five billion over ten years, think of all the money you're gonna save with this guy uh, leaving the building. We provided capital financing for a whole host of Ramsey County buildings, libraries, a recycling center, Green Line, Union Depot. Congratulations <coughs> on the development of, of all of those and uh, being able to, to move forward on the facility side. We designed new space and co-located all of finance. That might be out of sight, out of mind for you. If so, that's fine. It's important for me as CFO. I'm glad that we now have all of our financial operations under one roof down at Metro Square. Before we had our operations and budget people in room 270, we had procurement in 210, we have payroll, our finance payroll people embedded in HR, they're all now together in finance. It's hard to quantify the synergy involved in having people together in close proximity, but I can feel it and I think it's helped the organization. So I'm thankful that you've been supportive of, of that move that we recently did. We created the Finance Fellows Program in, in partnership with Metro State University. I think that's been a really, really positive um, a program. I think it can be and should be duplicated in other non-financial areas. It's a grow our own approach, right? It's a recognition that we can't just put an ad in NeoGo and expect the line to form on the right and then we have the pick of the litter. There are some things that we have to do to increase our chances. We need to be an employer that people want to come to, and I think our visibility in, in uh, local circles is increasing in that regard. And I think we have to have a grow our own approach. Find good people, hire them, but I think make sure that we develop them properly. In this case, the finance fellows, there's four or five of them at any given time. We have them spend a year in each in, in different departments. We rotate them in four or more departments. And by the end of their fellows program, they're, they're, they really understand better way of how Ramsey County does business. And I think then are ready to begin their career, their accounting careers at Ramsey County. We're moving ahead with the accounting's capability assessment report. As I said before, firming up, how we do our hiring, our recruitment, our selection, our onboarding, our training, our development. Also, uh, as we move ahead with TARP, Talent Attraction, Retention and Promotion, I think it's an opportunity for us to make refinements to our accounting and finance related uh, classifications and position descriptions. I think we can be tighter about those and modernize some of those. So I look forward to TARP addressing that and dealing with that in a positive way. And I think also to the extent that TARP does the market assessments of how our positions rate with other public peers, I think that'll be important. I don't honestly know. I don't have any pontifications on that. I'm just glad that we're going through that process to see sort of where we, uh, where we line up and if we need to make improvements in certain areas. We created a revocable, and then it was an irrevocable OPEP trust. That's been very good for us. Because we have an OPEP trust that we have been able to put money away in and been able to get that compounding effect of investment earnings, this then does not come up as an issue, OPEP doesn't, when we talk to our rating agencies. Other public organizations that go through their ratings have to do a lot of explaining about how they're planning on paying their pension liabilities as well as their OPEL, other post-employment benefits liabilities, if they, to the extent that they have OPEB liabilities. The rating agencies have been very favorable on us by having this OPEB trust and the funding that we've set aside and how it's built up over the years. And we've also, we also right now are generating more rigorous and real-time financial status reports. I do wonder why we didn't do this years ago. Uh, but I know the answer why. The answer why is because we didn't need to. We ended up at the end of each year with operating surpluses that fell back to fund balance, which was an okay thing. But times are changing. We are budgeting tighter now. 
as you know, in adopting the 2020-2021 budget, where we have higher vacancy factor rates, where we have uh, the expectation of departments generating uh, vacancy savings in order to balance their budget, we are going to have less and less end of year surpluses. So our ability to know our ongoing operating budgets on a real time basis has a higher premium now than it ever has before. So the fact that we're doing these quarterly financial status reports, but really having reports that we can monitor real time, that, that's really important for the organization and I think has been a really big, um, a really big improvement for us. So as we go forward, what's underway? What does Alex need to think about in her first 12 months? Uh, if she wishes, uh, one of the things is we're in the process right now of upgrading our Hyperion budget application into a cloud-based module. This will make our budget preparation and documents much easier to produce. We had this Hyperion budget application for the last couple of years. It's a, a sophisticated application. Uh, for us, it's, it's, it's not been user-friendly. Uh, this moving to a cloud-based module for Hyperion a planning and budgeting application I think will make our lives a lot better and uh, easier and uh, it's, it's a, it's a, um, it has more robust features that will help us. We're implementing a new fully electronic business expense reimbursement module to eliminate paper claims processing. Goodbye 1985. <laughs> Hello, 2020. I mean, this, this paper-based wow. system of paper claims and yeah. paper checks. Yeah. This will be automated and electronic, and I, I'm really looking forward to getting to the other side of that. That's fully underway right now. Mm. Finance Department and the controllers are going to prepare a financial resiliency report that evaluates county revenues and expenditures mm -mm. in the event that there's an economic downturn my how times change just a few months the last time we talked about this it was i think september i was giving my financial fund balance report to you at that time the pundits i think were kind of saying oh it looks like a recession is right around the corner oh it's going to happen anytime now and uh this seemed very timely well since then the market's gone gangbusters at least until the coronavirus uh, I, I don't know what's going to happen if we're going to have a recession, but I, I am quite certain that I think it's really important for us as a financial hygiene matter to go through this exercise so that we really understand that if and when things start slowing down on the economic side, whether that's a month from now, a year from now, 10 years from now, we understand where our vulnerabilities lie on the revenue side as well as on the service delivery side and on the expenditure side. So we have a project manager from our EPMO office that's assigned to the work group that involves finance department and controllers that are working on this and I would hope and expect that they would have a report back to you in a couple months of that. Finance topics that need further discussion. So these are these are longer term. These are things that I'm I'm bringing up today because I want you to start thinking about them. No decisions needed today. But these are things that I think kind of deserve a little bit more conversation. Uh, the first one is tax rates, levy increases. The second one is capital financing. I'll start with the first one. First, tax rates, levy increases. I, I've spent some time thinking about where we are now at in point in time with our levy rates and our county tax rates. I've gone back and I've done a 10-year review. You, you saw some of this information. We handed it out at one of the budget meetings, showed our 10-year history. We showed comparison to other public peers in terms of where they were at. Here's my take on it. Over the past 10 years, we've had some years that we have higher levies, some years that we have lower. For example, in 2014 and 2015, we had 0% levies. In this biennium, we have the 4.75 and the 4.5. We've had other levies you know, in between, but those are kind of the bookends. Our 10-year average levy increase is averaged at 2.5%, right? 
So, okay, if that's an annualized 10-year levy increase, how do we feel about that? Well, if you go back and look at just basic consumer price inflation over that 10-year period, the rates to me look like they're in the 1.9% range. So inflation at 1.9, our levy at 2.5, it doesn't strike me as being very dissimilar. And our population is going up. And I think it is true the public demands more, better, faster. More, better, faster has a cost. Um, and, and, but nonetheless, it seems like our levy increases have not been out of step on a multi-year sort of trajectory. From time to time, uh, a constituent might say, hey, what about your tax rate? Or the media might say, what about your county tax rate? Ramsey County tax rate is the highest county tax rate in the metro area. Hmm. So what do we make about that? Well, the tax rate is a mathematical calculation of taking your levy and spreading it across your market value, assessed market value. If you have a high levy, you could have a higher tax rate. If you have a high property wealth, you'll have a low tax rate. That, I think, is what's going on there. Because on a per capita basis, on a per capita spending basis, which I think is a better indicator of spending, Ramsey County is actually lower than, than the midpoint uh, statewide. Ramsey County, the Ramsey County per capita levy rate is for 2018 is 64 out of 87 counties. One is I. Again, 64 out of 87. So we're on a per capita spending basis, levy spending basis. We're not even at midpoint, we're below. I think what that tells us is our spending is, is um, not too high. Our spending is consistent with inflation and other demands in the marketplace. Uh, if anything, on the tax rate side, I think it just reaffirms what we already know. We need to take measures to build up our market value and our uh, assessed value. And that's back to what we already know about the need for redevelopment and the importance for infill to be able to spread our levy rate even further. I also did a quick peek at our ability to pay measures. I asked the Policy and Planning Division recently to look at um, Ramsey County employer wage rates and growth over the past eight years, and also um, um, median incomes over the past eight years. And we're still looking at that data. I don't know that we've completely got our heads around it, but my quick look at it suggests that on a Ramsey County employer wage rate growth basis over the past eight years, wage rates in Ramsey County have been growing at 2.7%. Right? Median income has been growing about 1.9%. Again, not dissimilar from our, our levy rates. I think going forward, what additional analysis that really would be good to delve into is not just what our per capita, um, or not just what our median income is, but what our growth rate has been for maybe the lowest quartile of our income levels. We're unable to get that data. You know, we can add median, uh, median income growth rates, but I think it's really important for us maybe to do a better job of understanding what that lowest income bracket, what their situation is. You can make an argument that in an 11-year bull market, high income people and even uh, middle income people should be able to redirect more of their income towards uh, uh, levies. But the, the people at the bottom, economic, they're the ones that are living hand to mouth. And they're the ones that have less flexibility in their personal budgets. When the person got up at our last truth and taxation meeting and said, you talk about affordable housing. I had affordable housing. You're taxing me out of it. That, uh, that resonates with me. But back to Ramsey County, I still feel that the 
if that's a multi-year average, is realistic. What I'm more concerned about, here's a payoff pitch. What I'm more concerned about is some of our public peers. The 10-year annualized rate for the city of St. Paul is 5.8%. For the St. Paul School District is 5.4%. That's a year, the year in, year out, 10-year average rate. I think that deserves more discussion. I think that deserves more discussion at JIPTAC. Uh, you know, if, if these are just statistical anomalies, if this is just some sort of historical um, aberrations, okay, fine. But going forward, if the idea is that our collective tax rates are going to be taking more and more money out of the economy for our taxing jurisdictions, uh, I, I think this deserves some thought. We pride ourselves on doing biennial budgeting. The state does biennial budgeting. The state also does biennial budget plus look ahead to the out biennium after that biennial budget. We might be at a point in time, and maybe this is a topic for GIPTAC, I'll leave you with a thought, that maybe GIPTAC needs to start talking about a multi-year look at, all right, stop crying over spilled milk, what we did before, but where are we going? If some of these growth rates continue, um, I, I think that's something that deserves uh, additional conversation. So I'm just going to leave that as food for thought for you to for you to mull over. On the next one, expanded capital financing sources for major projects. It looks to me like, like you had some major projects coming down the pike. You had TCAP, you have you know Rivers Edge. You have a co-located, you know, office facility, perhaps. Uh, if, if there's one thing that I feel bad about missing, not having been here before or having seemed accomplished, it's TCAP. Dog on it. I wish we had been able to push that across the finish line. I wish I had been here to be able to help on the financing side, put the finishing touches on the financing of that. It was not meant to be in, in my tenure. Uh, uh, someday when you have a new downtown in Arden Hills, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna dine at the restaurant. I'm gonna have a steak and a martini, and I'm gonna celebrate your uh, your successes. Shop at the <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm a Costco member already. Uh, but you know, if if all three of these brought here's a message I want to deliver. If all three of those projects broke tomorrow. I don't think you have enough capital financing in play right now <laughs> to be able to do all three of those at the same time. But since they're apparently not all happening at the same time, you have the luxury of time, and I think that will, will help you. But I also think that when they come in, whenever they come in, in their proper turn, you're also going to need to think about some financing creativity. Maybe maybe if you're, if you're lucky, you'll be able to bond for the public financing components within our debt service levy, but I don't think so. It seems to me like the level of public financing that will be needed for those three projects will be such that it will put pressure on you to increase the, the debt service levy. Um, and, uh, no. And, uh, uh, think about expanding the debt service levy, so kind of be aware of that. And I think for some of these that, you know, those projects are not projects that will need year in and year out public financing contributions. They'll be more one time or limited duration. For those, you might want to think about actually using your general fund balance. And I know that might sound odd coming from a CFO, but we have built up our general fund balances over the years. They are at a very good level right now. We get rewarded for that in our rating agency presentations, and that's a good thing. But I don't think it would be inappropriate to take money off the table for some of these major capital projects if you need to and, and look at general fund balance as being a source. And if you get around to doing that co-located county office facility, you also might want to look about whether there's some private financing alternatives to supplement what has been our quintessential public financing strategies, you might want to look at that as well. So that's just food for thought.
And do you want to take questions and comments as we go, or do you want to wait? Uh, the agenda has it at the end. I guess I'll ask Lee what he prefers. We've got I'll, one I'll, more. I'll, one I'll more take page. I'll, How about we take questions on that now, and then, because I think you'll have questions on the next page when I get to that as well. All right, well, then I'll recognize Commissioner yeah. McDonough. Thank you, Madam Chair. A couple of and I want to take this opportunity with everybody in the room, because you've, uh, you've done a I've got three areas that I'd like to either okay. comment or raise a question on. So on the on the budgeting, the 1.9 for consumer price index, 2.5. You know, we can take we can solve right that. Especially, you, you know, take a look at some of our partners. But and you 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 called it out here, but you didn't get to talk about it much. And one of the things that I continue to rise because raise, you know, the farther we go down our path, some of these things get much much harder to do. And one of the areas that I want to, you know, that I think you've done, and you've raised it here, but um, is too many times we just, as we learn, as we do better, as we learn better practices, as we make changes in how we provide our services, or our modeling, we don't always do a good job of going back and pulling out or that prioritizing of shifting and allocating existing resources. It's hard. Um, Maybe we do it better than I give us credit for it. Um, but that could be the difference in that point six, right? Just us doing a better job of, and I get it, there's a lot of ownership for some of the stuff that we've done. It was, in its time was, you know, groundbreaking in itself. But, um, you know, I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about that a little bit. The difficulties of reprioritizing, reallocating within existing budgets to align with current values and goals and missions, instead of always just going right to a levy increase or trying to find outside dollars. Uh, Madam <coughs> Chair, Commissioners, I, I think that's a, a good point. You know, the third bullet point there kind of you know, tees that up, right? I, I think it is the it is a discussion item that you're going to need to pay attention to on a go forward basis. If if our trajectory of levy increases ours or our public peers whatever the case might be. If that is going to be our trajectory going forward, I think it's going to put a higher premium on the need to prioritize and reallocate. I, I mean, I, it's always that natural budget tension, right? Is it is it base budget plus more, plus more, plus more? Or is it, uh, do, are we serious about wanting to go back and do true prioritization and true reallocations? And I, I think every time you go through a budget cycle, I think those are the questions you need to ask yourself about the first, as a finance person, I would say the last dollar spent doesn't seem as important as the first dollar spent. There, there's a continuum then, continuum in any budget of prioritizations, and you got to decide which, what you want to put your money on. Yeah. And Madam Chair, um, if I could go on. And yep. we're, I just wanted to raise it. I wanted to hear your your thoughts about that, you know, this opportunity that we've been providing here to have this conversation with you. wanted to just tease out a little bit more in the wage rate piece. And, you know, we've had conversations. And we've done, I think, a really job, you know, your picture of the senior leadership team says a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And I think we've done a really good job of adjusting and reorganizing. Where I get concerned, and I don't know if this actually plays into the rate rate, is ensuring that we're not getting too top heavy or even middle heavy, and that we're continuing to invest in frontline providers, right? And if, if what is that, you know, your analysis and paying attention to wage rate, how much of that, you know, is attributed to actually across the board wage increases versus you know, we're paying more for labor because we've added more middle and upper management positions versus actually frontline workers. Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners, uh, a, a couple of thoughts, see if this comes close to. I did also go back and look at the Ramsey County staffing levels. And the numbers that I came up with were in 2012, we had 3,721 FDs. In 2020, we'll be up to 4,186. So in that time period, that eight-year period, we've added 465 FTEs in Ramsey County. And you might say, well, that, that sounds like a goodly amount of FTEs, and maybe it is, but 3,700 you know, FTEs, more than 4,000 FTEs, spread over eight years, that's about a one and a half percent 
FTE increase rate per year. So that, to me, in terms of the number of FTEs increased at Ramsey County, for Ramsey County Incorporated, that doesn't seem to me to be out of line. But my sense is this, my sense is, it's not just a conversation about management versus labor. You know, technology and technology needs, and it feels to me like with the changing business marketplace, we have to pay more for intellectual talent. We have to have classifications and people that do jobs that have intellectual capacity. And it feels to me like we have to pay for that. So I, I think it's more complicated than just management, labor. It, it feels to me like, and I didn't go back and see what percentage was labor back in the day, what percentage was management back in the day. It, it feels to me like there's maybe a middle piece there might be where the growth area, but that's my instinct. I don't know that as a fact. Thank you. And then, Madam Chair, the last, you, you brought up TCAP, and I just wanted to circle back to that because, you know, you shared your disappointment in not being a part of the mm -hmm. final deal, but I wanted to just say to you and actually call you out, and it's not just TCAP, but it goes back to all the things that you've talked about over the last 10 years is one of the strengths that you brought in not only to this board, but to this county and to all the things you've talked about, but in particular in TCAP, that your position isn't just about making the numbers work and having no reds or blacks or having more blacks than reds, but it's actually about attaching what we do and how we finance that and how we prioritize that with our values in this county, with our mission and our goals. And I would suggest that even though we're not where we want to be at TCAP, the reason why we're at here is because you kept continuing to remind us that this deal needed to reflect our values. It needed to reflect the mission and goals in this county, and you were a voice in that. And coming from the finance person means a lot to me. And I think it means a lot to this county. So I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Ortega. I just want to follow up on something Jim said. <clears throat> you said, you know, as we move forward, uh, we need to be mindful of how we reallocate from the base budget or realign the budget to to the new priorities rather than adding on, if I understood that correctly. Is that a fair assessment? Yes. So my <coughs> question is, so facing reality is, you know, this board is a political body, and so they're always going to be, I mean, for all of us, those those interests <coughs> that sort of keep things rigid. So it's easy to say we should talk about it and so forth. But I'm thinking of like if you, when you want to get back in shape, you put you get yourself a routine. You start slowly. You have exercises. I'm trying to think what are those exercises? You know how can we get this board to start? dealing with that issue because I believe that is going to eventually be the issue that breaks the camel's back. Mm -hmm. uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners, a, a couple of thoughts. I mean, I think you can't go through a true prioritization exercise unless you have things laid out in front of you, you know, and you, and you decide where you want to put your priorities. I went to an optometrist. They put the goggles on you. A or B, B or A, you know, what what has the better foot. I think in your budget process, you, you know, you need to continue to go through budget processes where all of it's laid out in front of you in a meaningful way where you can decide where you want your first dollars, where you want your last dollars, where you want your new dollars, what's important to you. What I would say is the place that you, I think your comfort at where you get to will be strengthened if you know that you've gone through a process where you've looked at it all as opposed to making a decision on one day about something here, making a decision about something else on another day here and another day over there. You know, you're gonna you're you're gonna have to decide you want to increase your, your your levy because you want an HRA levy, do you want to increase your levy because you need more regional rail money, do you want to increase your general operating levy, do you want to raise your debt service levy to do SASE new capital buildings, do you want to raise your levy 
uh, you know, uh, uh, for a library, for a library, those are the choices, and you're going to have to decide. Maybe do a little bit of everything, but I think you just have to stack them up side by side. That would be my advice. Thank you. Um, and thank you for going through the litany of choices that we have to make as we look at um, not only our two-year budgets, but as we think down the road, given the history that you just shared with us about the future that we want to see and the choices that we have to make. Um, you spoke about uh, potential of assessing the increase specifically of the debt levy. And certainly our debt levy has been a number as opposed to a percentage uh, throughout the years and that's a good place to look and you talked about the need for evaluating the use of that general fund balance and whether or not those two are connected they're certainly connected in this last phrase so as you talk about using general fund perhaps for capital projects I just want to test that the assumption you're making is that that general fund can actually help us to increase the debt levy and pay that service um, as we think about the capacity that we need for big projects or for HRA, should we consider living um, in the HRA. So I'm, I'm just wanting to know if you're connecting the dots in that last phrase. Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners, I, I, I might have been connecting my dots a little bit differently. I, I, was, I, was, I was trying to say, maybe elegantly, I view general fund balance as, as fair game for a one-time use, That's right? Not okay. not for operating, ongoing operating, never, 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 never. Okay. But for one-time, one-time high priority things, mm -hmm. you know, there are there are just times where I think looking at the general general fund balance and saying this is time to use it is not inappropriate. Not unlike this last year, you know, you you. you um, authorize the full slate of 2020 capital projects, right? Mm -hmm. And in more years than not, we would have bonded for them. Uh, for, for a number of reasons, we decided to go out, we decided not to go out for 2020 bond sale at, at this time for those projects. We use one-time money, yeah. capital projects on here and there, we pieced it together. It's the same notion, right? It's just there are times where the use of one-time money, it's not illogical to deploy it. Thank you. I wanted to make sure that that wasn't the connection, but it was. Are there other questions? Are there some that? Okay. CFO recommendations to the board. Uh, give your new CFO time to learn the organization and our financial needs. Don't be complacent about AAA bond ratings. I do want to talk about that for a minute. Um, you know, we, we you, you could say, uh, all right, we've had a AAA bond rating since 2001, before I got here. What's the problem? What are you worried about? Stop being nervous about it. Everything's fine. Mm -hmm. And I would say, everything is fine. And I, everything better stay fine. That's, that's, that's the idea. But don't be complacent about it. My message is, just because you had a AAA bond rating doesn't mean you keep it into perpetuity. You have to continue to re-earn that right. Your AAA bond rating is only as good as your last major financial decision. I want to give you a, I want to digress with just a quick uh, uh, case study, right? To just drive this home to you. So this is a story about a municipality that was in the news a number of years ago. The municipality said, we want to build ourselves a community center, a recreational facility, right? But we want to do it in a way that we in inoculate ourselves from the financial risk. So will instead of selling city general obligation bonds that have a full faith and credit taxing authority pledge and instead of having to go through a public referendum process we'll sell revenue bonds we'll sell project revenue bonds because then you know it's not a it doesn't bounce back to the municipality it's on the project and similarly we don't want to operate this facility we'll have a 501c3 nonprofit group come in and operate this facility for us. So, you know, we'll, we'll keep this at, at arm's length. Well, uh, sounds good. What, what, what could go wrong? Revenue bonds that had a higher interest rate, so investors snatched them up. Uh, 
What's the problem? It's a, it's a, it's a government bond, right? You had the revenue bond. The city had their economic development authority issue the revenue bonds. So the bonds are in the name of the economic development authority. The, the advocates had said, you know, you don't have financial risk, you don't have reputational risk, they're a revenue bond, yeah, but the name of that city economic development authority is on those bonds. Investors snatched them up, a lot of them mom and pop investors. What could go wrong? Well, revenues didn't come in as expected, expenditures came in higher, the nonprofit operator wasn't able to bridge the gap, the city did have a financial exposure. The city was a master leaseholder in the operations of the facility. There was an expectation in the bond community that if you know there wasn't enough programming in the facility to operate it successfully, that the city would step in. The city didn't see it that way. The city balked at making the, the payments. The project finances eroded. Debt service wasn't paid, the bonds defaulted, it went to a court case. The court stepped in, named a trustee. The trustee had to sell the facility for pennies on the dollar. All right, we're talking about the Badness <laughs> Sports Center. We're talking about the Badness Sports Center, right? Uh, wow. the, 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 the rating agencies, the rating agencies are not your friends. The rating agencies are not your buddies. The rating agencies are there to evaluate risk and to evaluate credit worthiness of the organization that they're rating. They do not like to be fooled. They do not have a sense of humor about it. <laughs> when when they, they rate a bond and the bond goes south, they reevaluated the rating for the city of Badness Heights. When, after they were done, when the gentle readers of the city of Vadna Heights woke up the next morning and went to their doorstep to pick up their daily paper, or the more modern ones read it online. This was the article that greeted them. Vadna uh -huh. Heights bonds now junk. Uh -huh. So one financial decision, one project, city of Vadna Heights rating went from their double A to in the low B range. Oh, wow. I'm a resident of Badness Heights. Badness Heights is a great community. They're well run. They were well run yesterday. They were well run today. They will be well run tomorrow. They have good housing. They have uh, good public services. They make good financial decisions every day. They made one bad project decision and it scuttled their ratings. You're only as good as your last major financial decision. Wow. Don't become complacent. I'm a big fan of the Talent Attraction, Retention, and Promotion Initiatives, TARP. I just wanted to put in a pitch for those. I don't know what the TARP recommendations are going to be, but I, I'm hopeful that they're going to be helpful to the organization as, as a senior official, a senior finance staff. It feels to me like the time has come to modernize and uh, move into a new TARP world. I hope you give those recommendations your full attention. ERP systems, it is absolutely positively clear to me that over the next few years, Alex is going to need to drive an initiative to move us away from our legacy Oracle PeopleSoft systems, which are no longer modern technology, to a cloud-based software-as-a-service platform. The world is going to software-as-a-service for financial applications. The private sector is already there. The public sector, more stodgy, more conservative, behind the curve, we're going to have to get there. We can either wait for the future to be done unto us, or we can embrace it and get there on our own. But Oracle is moving away from their own PeopleSoft application. They're moving to Oracle Cloud. We need to be mindful of the world is changing. It's time for us to think about moving in that direction. Finally, while Ramsey County is self-insured for tort liability, and for our fleet operations. We do have insurance for our property, uh, for uh, um, uh, Fleet Farm, for... Uh, uh, Fright Farm? Uh, yeah. Fright Farm, I'm Thank sorry. You. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now that, that, that would upset your, some of your levy increases if you're on Fleet Farm. Uh, uh, we, we do have some insurances. We have two, 
to, we have a consultant and a claims administrator in the county attorney's office. I think it's time to move them from the county attorney's office under the enterprise risk manager. I've not, I'm sorry, county attorney's office, wherever you are. I've not discussed this with them. They might like that. They might not like that. But it feels like there's some natural evolution here. So I would, I would offer that. Finally, thank you again for 10 years. Thank you for putting up with me for 10 years. Thank you for allowing me to be part of the Big Red R. I, I really appreciated it. Uh, what else can I say? Thank you. Yeah, I do. I am um, got to pull them together here. I just really appreciate this opportunity. So thank you, uh, Ryan and Lee, for putting giving us this opportunity. I feel like, yeah, there's just lots of questions. I'm excited to welcome Alex into all of this and all of your great staff. Um, I, um, you had said about, I, I'm just going to pick your brain a little bit more about some of these things. Um, you mentioned about um, GIPTAC and about our public peers and having discussions on that. And that, it is true, we, you know, we're a part of a, of a, of a larger group of local governments that, that are on our tax forms. And, um, you know, I'm, I've not been to GIPTAC meetings, um, I've maybe been to one, but do you have any recommendations on how we, I mean, we're required to have them, and I know, Victoria, you sit on it, I don't know who else. Raphael. And Raphael, and do you want to call, I do have suggestions on how we can work with our other local units of government because, right, we, we can't we can't tax our people out of their affordable homes. I mean, I, I'm very sensitive to that as well. Um, Madam Chair, Commissioners, I'll, I'll, I'll give a quick thought and Ryan's uh, approaching the microphone. So, <laughs> uh, I, I um, you know, Jip Tax started lying before I got here, so I can only imagine what the impetus was. I, I thought the idea of Jip Tax was that all three organizations, you know, major um, public peers would would meet organically, collegially, and talk about what that stacking effect is on the local public and have a dialogue about how they're all additive and how they all work. It feels to me like, my observation has been, it, it feels to me like, I don't know that that's happening, it feels to me like the jurisdictions are making their own tax and spend decisions, mm -hmm. and then coming back to Jip Tac later in the game, mm -hmm. and then seeking validation. Well, what else are you going to do at that point? Mm -hmm. I mean, all three jurisdictions have already set their levies. Mm -hmm. What else? What else is Jip Tac going to do at that point? It feels like a, a discussion earlier in the game would be warranted. And, and again, I think it's maybe a looking ahead element would be a good additive element that isn't in place right now, right? Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, Commissioner Blair, if I could have just one thought to it from real time from even last, I think our last chip tech meeting was last week, right? Yeah. Last week or two weeks ago. Um, and so I don't know how much sometimes our other entities are sitting down having the same conversations. And part of my goal is to try and bring those there, and I want to hope that they are, but it's a conversation. Much of what you're hearing today is the ongoing conversation that's happening with the CFO and the county manager during our one-on-ones. These are the, some of the topics we're kicking through and struggling with. Um, I, I personally believe that we need to bring in entities beyond just the local governments to help drive a conversation about the impact of what the levies on the compounding I I issue can have. Because when it's all of us having to talk about it from our own end alone, it can be challenging. And so, mm -hmm. Ramsey County led the charge the last meeting to talk about how could the business community be a part of this summer's meeting to talk about what, what they've been seeing on the property tax side and how that plays a role alongside the rest of this. And trying to bring others into the room to be a part of that dialogue is a part of that approach. It doesn't change who sits at the table and who needs to ultimately discuss and lead. But um, I, I have noticed that like we've been, we haven't had the same conversation with the chamber in a while on this stuff, and I think that's an important spot. And mm -hmm. so I hope that it was enthusiastically received by our partners around the table to do that yeah. at the June meeting. And so um, I think that's one of the ways we're trying to do that is bring other parties in the room to talk about the impact of those levy increases. Mm -hmm. So I saw Commissioner Reinhardt first, then Commissioner Dunn, and then Commissioner Carter. Well, and I have been on uh, GIPTEC for a while. Um, unfortunately, the Clean Water Council meetings um, often um, have been in conflict, so I'm trying to make sure that I'm there. Or that I'm there. But um, regardless, I honestly think that um, we need to, we're reimagining a lot of things. 
and I think Jim Tech is one of them that needs to be reimagined because what I see, there's, there's good conversation and yeah. um, good ideas that come forward, but we meet on a quarterly basis and it's not, um, I don't think there's as much product, productivity coming out of there that, as there could be. And part of that is based in the fact that we were all handed something that was pre-made. Um, because I don't even know how long it's been around, a long time, no. Um, it had a different purpose, I think, when it started. And so I'm glad to hear that there was, um, whatever said, <laughs> I'm glad to hear that there's some ideas about moving in a different direction by bringing other people in. Um, but I do think that when that's done, it has to be pretty clear what it's about. Um, because, I mean, I still remember the time when uh, the mayor of St. Paul uh, decided that he could vote against our levy. <laughs> and after, after them having double-digit increases, they had one year where there wasn't any increase uh, because they had shifted to the fees instead. I mean, it was kind of crazy. But you're sitting there going, okay, we're here together. What, what is this about? What are we doing? Because you can't realistically um, you need to be informed, and I think to begin with it was more than just informed, it was we're going to have our hands in each other's budgets. That doesn't really work. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I don't know that this is the place, <laughs> probably not, but you brought it up. <laughs> um, as far as, we need to really look at what can we do with this. To me, it's in many ways like, some of the other discussions that we've been having about our committees and about, um, I, I think about the, the judicial, the court, <coughs> county court committee and how we actually said, hey, you know what? We need to reimagine this and sit down and talk to each other about our issues. Um, but I don't see that really happening at JIPTEC because we try to go that direction and then it seems to pull back to, yeah, but this is all we do. We have to watch each other's budgets. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it doesn't make any sense. It's not what we should be doing. So I think we really need to, it's not just tweaking around the edges. I think we need to do some, some big changes there mm -hmm. that can really move us forward rather than just mm -hmm. talking and then going our own separate ways and then coming back together uh, three months later and talking again. And that's been my experience. That's just sounding so exciting to you, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I think we can do more. We can do more with that and really make a difference in um, where it started and where it is now. It's not really doing much good, I don't think, for anyone. And Commissioner McGowan, is a comment on JIP DAC or something? Okay. No. Then I'm going to go to Commissioner Carter. I'm just um, appreciating the comments that have already been made. It does seem to me as though when you talk about our being able to do much better, when we hear about the fact that we tend to be coming together and discussing what has happened. It does need to get to a format where we're discussing what we can do together because the impact of our taxes on our residents, you know, will hit them as a package. We need to be talking ahead of time mm -hmm. about the good planning and collaborative work that we can do together so as to be able to hold down that impact over time. And I think that's what you mean by it. we can do so much better yeah. if, in fact, we look ahead and determine how to monitor that work we're doing together for its success. I do have another question there, and I'll make sure I make that one. Well. No, I have some questions on the gym deck there. Okay, well, go ahead. I have okay. So the other thing that I just wanted to thank you for is all of the work that you've overseen throughout the years. and. Our being a well financial management county is not accidental at all. You know, it is due to the great work that all of you and your staff and together with our, our departments now service teams have done. As we look at the changes that have happened, the service team orientation, and as we think about the complexity of budgets, the different funding streams, et cetera, that are managed across the organization. Um, and we had also elected officials who manage departments. The question that I have to ask is, what can we do better to ensure that we have aligned policies, practices, and procedures across the entire organization so that there is ever more a relationship of working 
together with our finance department between all of those departments and we eliminate or reduce the kind of surprises you know that upset us all there was a um, a place in here where you mentioned on the 10 years continue page expanded controllers into each service team mm -hmm. and is that I don't know if you stopped on that you know the bullet was here but is there more in that area that is helping us to align everything that we do across the entire county uh, Madam Chair Commissioners there's a there's a, um, a lot in there a lot a lot in that question I mean I you know, just keep doing what you're doing. I mean, it feels to me like you're on the right trajectory right now. I feel like, again, we have a strong financial foundation. I like the fact that you have workshops and discussions on a weekly basis or however the schedule plays out so that as a finance person, I understand what kind of direction we're going. It helps uh, uh, all the finance people, I think, know when there's, you know, pivots, whether major or small in place. I've appreciated the fact that uh, finance supports the organization best when it's brought in the earliest in any kind of major financial decisions or discussions. You know, we'll, we'll try to not be just the harbingers of no, but, you know, try to help, you know, modify it in a way that can work so that there's no surprises later. Um, just like elected officials generally don't like to be surprised, finance people don't like to be surprised either. So that that kind of you know involving everybody earlier is a is a good thing. Controllers have been a where are the controllers in? Controllers stand up. Stand up controllers. Sorry, I didn't do it before. Thank you. Thank you. I love the controllers. I love the controllers individually. I love the controllers as a group. That's exactly what this organization needed. You know, through the translators, they translate central finance department guidance to the service teams where the work, you know, happens. I think the, the organization moving to having controllers in the service teams has been a giant step forward. And I, I think that's gonna that's gonna really help as well. Hopefully all that gets you as elected officials the information, what you need, when you need it, and have the confidence that things aren't just gonna surprise any of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I had just two points. Well, I, I'd love to pick your brain on a lot of these, and you've just given us great things to think about and remember, but the one other thing that I was just gonna ask you to tease out a little more is I really appreciated when you said, you know, that we should have our budgeting process be a true prioritization exercise. You know where you lay, lay out everything, but we've sort of, uh, you know, trained myself to not be too micromanaged. You know, so I, it's not really my job to go in, go into too depth into the budget, right? We wait for the budget to come to us. We say, here's what we want to do, and then we want the departments to come to us and say, here's how we can do that. So, can you just tease that out a little bit so that I come at it from the right point of view? Because I agree, I want it. I think it is important that we have this you know we don't just do base plus and Lord knows we did it all the time at the legislature and I'm like when do we get to actually to look at the base you know for good or not good so um, can you just talk a little bit more about that what, how you see our role as commissioners so we don't get too in the weeds on it which of course we sometimes love to do um, so Madam how do we be most helpful in that process okay. Would you like to go first? Or? No, you don't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just you know. answer. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, do you want to? You, you have a better answer. answer. I don't even know what you're answer. Answer. Anyone can help answer. I mean, as the finance chair, sure, I'm happy to. Um, I, I, uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners, a couple of thoughts. I mean, I, I think you've got a number of different bites of the apple. You know, you go through the numbers here. You, you should have enough discussion in the budget process to have a good understanding about the breadth and depth of what Ramsey County does and what's in the budget. That's your opportunity to, to, to talk out loud about where you think there should be more emphasis or where there could be less emphasis. You have that same opportunity in the performance management year. You know, performance management kind of plays right into it, right? If you, if you think that we need to beef up our performance management, our programs and services, that information will feed into the next biennial budget 
process. Mm -hmm. And people are listening to what you say about how you think we're doing in this area versus that area. No, I don't think you should micromanage. I, I would not want to go back to the days that, that were, where budget hearings argued about who had how many jugs of bottled water. Honestly, yeah. right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> right? No, no, I don't see that as helpful. And I don't see that as really changing the trajectory yeah. of your levy. Uh, <laughs> I think I think you just have to go through those processes and have enough of a discussion so that we as staff understand individually, we understand you individually as well as collectively what's important to you. And the county manager, the CFO, the DCMs, the department heads will then have to translate that into maybe a little bit more over here, maybe a little bit less over there. Commissioner Thank you. Well, I did want to I've been on this one because um, <coughs> right now, actually, uh, the budget uh, committee, uh, the chair and vice chair, Trista and I, are working with Elizabeth with uh, the county manager's office on making some major changes mm -hmm. in the presentation and how oh. things come forward. Um, the involvement of the county board, not micromanaging, but making sure that um, that we are the leaders that we were elected to be. Um, you know, sometimes things happen and you don't even realize because it's happening so slow. Um, and I'll be honest, there was, we had, we made some changes that we catered to, we catered to one person, uh, commissioner. And um, we ended up kind of losing the hands-on uh, part of the chair and vice chair mm -hmm. of the budget committee because of what we had to do. Um, we wanted to make sure that our process retained the integrity of uh, the leadership roles that we have, but also that the county manager had to be able to have open discussions about what we are trying to present. Because, for example, um, the performance measures, the idea behind that is in the second year that we really delve into that, but it's not just to talk about what we do well. Okay. It's to talk about what's not working. And that became increasingly difficult. Um, and so we're trying to set the table, and Elizabeth has been great, um, and Ryan, with uh, obviously under Ryan's leadership as a county manager, to say, how can we make this so that it is, so that we don't have surprises, mm -hmm. but also so that, um, you know, sometimes if there's heat to be taken, it, it is to be taken by us um, as far as the leadership role. Um, so trying to steer that particular ship of the actual budget committee and how it does reflect our goals and our aspirations and that we can do it in a very um, transparent and open way. That does not mean micromanaging, and actually that was part of the problem before as well, is that if we opened it up, it's, it's so, you know, again, you do things incrementally and suddenly you go, wait a minute, we used to talk about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so it's, it's correcting some things, not overcorrecting because we're being very careful about mm -hmm. how we do this, but I am really excited about the, um, the proposals that are coming out as far as how we're going to get this done, this being a performance year. And um, and you'll hear, we will be rolling out how we're going to do this um, in, a, in a really cohesive manner with really keeping the board um, and our goals and how we're trying to do this um, at the head of the ship here. And so, um, again, it's about aligning and it's about our input and our leadership, um, but ultimately it goes to the county manager um, with all of that input being able to bring it together and bring it back to us. So, um, and as I said, the county manager's office is not just engaged in this, but is really saying, okay, what can we do to make this, um, us? we're trying to move a ship. Mm -hmm. How do we move it in, in, a, in a smoother way and making sure that we're not uh, surprised. 
to the extent that we can anyhow. There's always mm -hmm. surprises that come up. So I'm excited about um, you asking the questions and, and how we can um, really get this going in, um, in a really cool way, I think. That's a good word to use for a budget. Really cool. Oh, well, <laughs> hey. Commissioner uh, McDonough. Yeah. Uh, I bring this up because uh, sometimes it's, you don't realize how far we've come. Yeah. Well, well, that's true. Okay. I'd like to hear. It was way yeah. more than just arguing over bottles of water, right? <laughs> and I say this not to scare you up, but actually, we <laughs> <laughs> made the right decisions that were on a really good path. Yes. But there was a day <laughs> yeah. when department heads would have a list in the budget. If I had to cut more, what would I mm -hmm. cut? If I could add more, what would I add? Yeah. And at the budget hearings, we would add, we would cut. There was a program made in, mm hard -hmm. to answer questions mm -hmm. exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, it was like, okay, levy up, mm -hmm. 1.2, levy down. I'm sure there were office pools all over the county on over-unders <laughs> for that day. <laughs> um, but it was terrible. <laughs> it was absolutely wow. terrible. It was a bad way to do budgeting. Mm -hmm. It, it went around, it gave department heads to go around the county manager because we would just go right off their sure. list. And so we've come a long ways. <laughs> and I think we ought, you know, like you said, we can't take the AAA for granted. We cannot take for granted how far we've come as a policy board and our role as electives, working with the county manager, working with the CFO, working with deputy county managers and every department here about a really healthy relationship on how we budget and align with mission mm -hmm. values and goals and, and move away from transactional, mm -hmm. if you give this to me, I'll support this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And there was a day where that was ruled the day. So I celebrate where we're at, but I use Lee's caution about it's fragile and we can lose it quickly. I think your words are really important to remind ourselves that. We have a responsibility in this too to ensure that we continue to attract the best <laughs> friends because they want to be a part of our team. Thank you. Madam Chair, just uh, one other piece to it, and I very much agree. You know, Commissioner Reinhardt and I spent some time in the budget chair role just talking through the timelines and how, as our timelines have changed, I mean, I've, yes. I've accelerated the process on our side of the hall to start earlier to bring more people in and do more prioritization <laughs> and allow more people into that process. And deliberation's hard, as you all know. Um, and, and so we started earlier, so we had to sit down and say, how do we start the conversations on the strategic underpinnings piece so that the board doesn't feel caught later on on that part of it? because our old timelines didn't mesh well with the new timelines of a county manager wanting to accelerate that part. So like those are the kind of things that need to happen and it still leaves you at a strategic level but ensures you are a partner in that part of the process and a driver at the right parts. The other thing I just wanted to add that I think it's lost in the budget process either year and it's come up a couple different ways so I'm not going to pin it just on your question but it's the third time this week it showed up in my world only by Tuesday. <laughs> wow. We so often get stuck in the mindset, myself included, of thinking of budgets as the timeline for either when they're presented or when you're evaluating them. And I, I just have to always push back on that from myself and everybody else. It is a never-ending process. Yes. And quite frankly, at the end of last year, we're closing out one while opening up the next. Mm -hmm. And we need, we are at the point as an organization, I'm gonna add one addendum, I guess, to, to the list today. I mean, I think we are at the point as an organization where we need to stop thinking of budgets as only a point in time. We are, we are doing this year round, and we need to think of those two points in time as the moments when we focus our organizational heft on conversations over a series of weeks, focus one year on dollars, and one year more on performance, but it's, it's a myth to suggest that I mean, we're, we've had performance action teams going now for the last month, and I sat with them two weeks ago. And I, I say that because on the budget side specifically, our HRA workshop that you all had recently gave me cues for the next two-year budget cycle that have not left my mind and have not left our conversations and have carried. And so, like, the idea that you have to wait until a budget hearing to have an impact on the next budget is something that I need to make sure somehow we're communicating that effectively with all of you. But I also think... Um, I think that should both bring you a level of comfort and also we should also keep thinking about how do we make sure we're explicit on that because I view every Tuesday, quite frankly, with all of you as setting budget direction for the future of this organization. Mm -hmm. I, that. I, that is, I agree. I, I mean, that is a discussion that, that, that we are having and totally makes how, we, how we uh, roll that out yeah. um, is going to be, um, well, okay, I'll just say it again, cool. <laughs> 
kind of thing. <laughs> Simply to indicate that it will also be cool to roll that out in the community yes. and to have people in our community understand that same thing, that this is not just a one-time exercise, yes. but it does yes. involve all of the work that we're doing and engaging our community throughout the two-year process. Mm -hmm. Finally, one more thing. Uh, I, I would also like to take this opportunity to publicly thank my finance department folks that are not just with us today, but behind me every single day. The finance managers, the finance staff, many of them are here today, but all 40 of them back in the Metro Square, that, I mean, they're the ones that do all the work. So uh, a word of thanks to all of you finance people for what you do every day. Very much appreciate it. And a big round. It's time to close up to meet the meeting. I'll just add that uh, I believe you are a constituent of District 1. Any <laughs> advice on that TCAP thing is a constituent. Stay in Yeah. Um, and we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Good job.